Hey, what's up, Onward here. Today I wanna to talk about my recent um, 180 mile ride from Iowa all the way to Chicago. Um, I did it with this group called Bike Illinois. Um, it was a great event, but let's get into it. So I think the first thing to kind of talk about with a ride like this long, and especially since I did it with a group, is what was the group like, you know, this experience? And, you know, Bike Illinois was really great. They did a really good job of organizing it. They had food um, for you. So they had like snacks set up, like whether it was just like cookies, beef jerky, um, pickle juice, stuff like that. And that pickle juice helped out a lot. And then the other fact of this is like the routes were really well planned. So there was two different options, a path option um, and then a road option once you got closer to the city. Um, but a lot of it was a lot like Indiana, so a lot of farmland and stuff up until you get to the city. Um, but overall, it was a great experience. Um, riding with them, I'd definitely go with them again. Um, so the next thing is like, you know, the ride itself. So it was broken into six chunks. Um, the first three was 30 miles, then it went to 20, 20, and then about like 18 or so at the end. So during that first segment, um, you know, we took off from that, from a support hotel um, and we kind of rode with a group. And during a lot of these like first two checkpoints, during the first two checkpoints, we kind of just went to the restroom and we blew through them. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that instead of using that food that the, uh, you know, organizers provided, we had gels on us. So we kind of just kept eating those. Um, I paced them at 30 minutes instead of 45 just to make sure I was I had all the carb stores and I didn't deplete those. Um, so during these stops, you know, we just made a quick pit stop, we went to the restroom and then we just kept going. Um, during the second one is kind of when we started feeling more fatigue. Um, we wanted to stock up on gels and a few other things, but since the cue sheets, you know, there's like a ton of pages in here um, and stuff like this, uh, my mom like supported us but it just kind of got confusing. Sorry, that was upside down. But it got confusing with, you know, just what was the difference between a water stop and, you know, the full stops, which one we're actually at, um, because I couldn't get my Garmin to actually start up with the location on it to provide to her. Um, so what we ended up doing was after that second stop, um, we ended up pulling over on the side of the road. She met up with us um, and we stopped up on a few things, just enough to get to that third stop because during that third stop is when we decided to take a bigger rest. So during that third stop is when we decided to take a bigger rest. So during that stop, third stop, um, you know, we ate a banana, I had peanut butter and honey sandwiches that I ate, um, and a little bit of pickle juice that the event provided. And we just took a break, you know, um, we ate chips. Um, I just preferred like, you know, just classic Lay's uh, chips that had like nothing on them just to make sure I didn't upset my stomach. Um, and then we just kept going. Um, you know, this was our longest stop. It was probably about 15 minutes total um, of just waiting there, but we were also about a hundred miles in. So, you know, that fatigue was really starting to add up. Um, you know, people started dropping out at that point. They kind of like the cutoff time started like adding up, but you know, we just kept going. We kept hammering our pedals. Um, you know, we weren't going at that same 17 miles per hour that we started off with, probably dropped around to like 13 or so. I had to stop looking at the pace and everything. I just went, um, to my dad's pace. I kind of went, you know, tried to motivate him to keep going as fast as we could. Um, but this is also when we hit the city. I was a little bit tired as well. Um, and this is where stuff kind of got weird because I accidentally hit path option and I have these tires on that are just, uh, you know, meant for more road and this was crushed gravel. So I was worried about getting a puncture. Luckily during the entire time I didn't get one, but it was kind of crushed gravel. So it was really fine. Um, and you know, we just kept going, we kept pedaling. Um, you know, we made sure that we took those gels and you know, we hit that next stop. Um, people started getting lost. Your GPS has started dying. Um, my GPS actually ended up dying in Chicago itself. Um, but luckily we were kind of like with a group at that point. But I mean, overall, like, you know, you look at like all of this stuff, all of these miles, everything else, you know, some people are just like, oh, well, if you can do 80, just double that, you know, it's no problem. Um, but what you don't notice during this is your brain just kind of is gone. Like you are just trying to turn the pedals. You're like not really focusing on a lot of stuff. And that kind of gets a little bit more hazardous when you get in Chicago 
just because there's more cars and stuff like that. Um, but funny enough, what I found during this ride is Chicago was fine, just since there's a lot more cyclists out and stuff like that. The suburbs was what got annoying, um, kind of people just honking, like kind of zooming past you and stuff like that. Um, but overall, I mean, I think the biggest learning experiences from this is really making sure that you pace those rest stops and, you know, dedicate, okay, we're going to take three minutes at each rest stop just to make sure that you can get off the bike for a second, recover, you know, two minutes. And then also lower that starting pace to something that's kind of more sustainable throughout the entire thing. Um, because we really, really suffered at the end. Um, you know, out of the 26 people that started, 11 dropped out. Um, I don't know like what caused it, but you know, those are the statistics of it. Um, so it is a hard ride. It's hard going this much mileage. But having people to support you and all that kind of stuff is one of the indispensable parts of this because it really helps you make sure that you're pacing stuff right. Um, you know, you see other people there also taking breaks, so that kind of encourages you. Um, one of the things that also helped me is to kind of know where we were um, in the pack, um, per se. So, you know, my dad was kind of getting worried about the cutoffs. I was just like, you know, we're in the front half of the groups right now. So even if we take this longer break at that third stop, you know, we'll be good. And, you know, you see people kind of rolling in at the end, um, you know, after us at that midway point, but it just paid to take that break because we felt better, we were able to finish. Um, you know, that brain fog still kind of kept crept in, but just having that support really helped out. Um, but overall, fun event, definitely we'll do it again. Next year, we're gonna do the ride across Iowa, it sounds like. Um, I might add more events in, but right now, um, this next video is gonna be the tour of America's Dairyland. I'm doing the last day of that. And then the Intelligentsia Cup is after that, Hilly 100. And then finally to close off the season, I'm gonna be doing um, a gravel ride um, that's 50 miles. So that's gonna be a fun race and definitely gonna sprinkle more stuff in. But hit that subscribe button if you guys want more content like this. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions about crit racing. If you guys want me to answer anything, um, let me know. And I'll see you guys next time, bye.